Well, yesterday we talked a lot about um, uh, finding pure joy, um, something that seems oxymoronic in the face of what he called many trials. Uh, many trials are basically part and parcel of living in this world. Whether you're Christian or not, there are difficult and trying times that you have to handle and negotiate on a regular basis. And so uh, that's understandable, but usually we get depressed or angry or frustrated uh, when things aren't going the way we want it. That's why we become unhappy. We want to be happy all the time, but a lot of times we're unhappy. And what God offers as a alternative to the constant pursuit of happiness, which seems to be so incredibly elusive, is that we can have joy. And in fact, about a pure joy, a, a joyfulness in our soul that is unadulterated by the circumstances that we find ourselves in at any given moment. And uh, that's when Jesus says, peace I give to you, my peace I give to you. It's a, it's a settled state of affair where we no longer f are really affected by the external conflicts. Uh, I have to admit, I do not stay in that constant state of peace. I go in and out of it. But that's the whole point, is that the more you uh, learn to pursue God's peace rather than uh, your own happiness, there is a greater sense of restedness and even a thing called joy, that joy is not jumping up and down exuberantly as we might translate it in the, uh, or use the word in the English language, but the biblical term really refers to really a, a settled state of contentment and confidence and peace. And, and our confidence is that even though God is allowing bad things to come in my life, I can make a choice whether or not those bad things control my mood or I allow the Holy Spirit to form my mood. And that becomes really the issue that are we emotional yo-yos? No, we're people who have can have this stability, this steadiness, this anchor to our soul that helps us to stay rooted and grounded in the truth of God's faithfulness and his goodness. And that's why in, in verse three of James one, he continues by saying, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Uh, I saw a, a gentleman, he was obviously a bodybuilder, who had a, a t-shirt on uh, at the airport the other day, and he said, and had written on it, says, pain, the pain of exercise is weakness leaving your body. And I thought, that's such a great statement, because when you feel pain of the exercise, you understand that there's an end goal, there's a purpose behind lifting the weights or running on the treadmill or whatever you're doing, riding on your peloton into the horizon. Um, there's a purpose behind it, and it's it, quite honestly, any kind of exercise is painful and exhausting and difficult, and yet at the same time, the truth is that that pain is there in order to strengthen your body so that you can have greater strength, greater ability, less weakness in your present life. Uh, it kind of reminds me of what, what Jesus said when he's talking in the parable of sower about um, in Matthew 13 when he said a, a, a farmer went out to sow his seed. Uh, sowing seed is a lot of work. I mean, that was something you had to walk long distances and casting your seed out in the hopes and then chasing away the birds to keep from snatching it up right away. But it goes on and says, as he was scattering his seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Jesus used that to illustrate the point that this person never really understood. They heard the word, but they never grasped the word. It never really penetrated their thinking. It was in one ear and out the other ear, as we might say today. And he says, basically, that's what the devil does. He tries to keep people living such distracted and hurried lives. They never stop and really think about where their lives are going or where they came from, or if there's any accountability that they're ultimately going to have. Well, as he goes on, he talks about that second kind of seed that fell in rocky places where it didn't have a whole lot of soil, he said, and it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the same shun came up and the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. And since he has no root, he later on went to explain, his la he lasts only a short time. And when trouble or persecution because, because the word comes, he quickly falls away. Jesus here again, obviously talking about that rootedness is a form of strength. It is at least in the plant world that the wider and deeper a root goes, the more it can withstand the, the pressures and stresses of weather. And uh, we see it up here in our part of the country all the time when these great big windstorms come. And you'll see these 60, 70, 80 foot trees just come 
toppling down and they're quite dangerous, but they many times they just are pulled right up by their roots uh, because whatever the condition is, the roots there never went deep enough. They tended to stay on the surface. And that's what's a problem, I think, many times is we want to live kind of a superficial Christianity. We want all the blessings. We want all the benefits. We want to know the joy, the peace. Uh, we, we love the stuff that God gives us. And yet, when we live like that and never go through hardships, we never know, uh, basically, uh, we never know poverty, we never know hunger, we never know loss, we never know adversity of any kind. There is a, a shallowness to our faith because one of the things that James later on says, he says that the poor of this world are rich in faith towards God. That's always struck me because I, I've seen how that is, that when you don't have enough money to cover the bills, you pray earnestly. And then you get the joy of seeing God provide. My wife and I, in, in our 51 years of, of sharing life together, have seen over and over again how that God provided. And we spent most of those 51 years really kind of, as people often say, living from paycheck to paycheck. And there literally were times when there was no money and there was no source of income that was going to, uh, that we could look forward to. And God just miraculously came through and provided. And those kind of experiences are not fun but they bring such a sense of encouragement and faith into your life when you see God answer the prayer. So I hate the trials, but I'd love the benefit. As someone once said, my father-in-law said to me recently that, you know, he says that the fights that a uh, husband and wife have are terrible, but making up is wonderful. And it's almost like that kind of experience that the making up uh, of after we go through this thing of being angry and frustrated with God, that he would let us go through such difficult circumstances, they are the thing that really matter. But one of the things we need to keep in perspective is when things come into our life, the reason, as we talked about yesterday, of counting them as pure joy is because they are forcing the roots of our faith to go deeper and deeper so that when adversity does come, we have something to draw from. We have a, an inventory of life experiences that we can go back to and say, you know, God, you, you did it before and you'll do it again. You did it before and you'll do it again. And we rest in that because we know God is faithful. So uh, be encouraged and we'll keep on talking tomorrow about some of these things, uh, especially this issue of perseverance. What an what a interesting word. Well, blessings and go in his grace.